Beeswax Data Tools, a FileMaker Pro database design firm, presents the Bion Stones Data Tool. This project is made possible by the generous support of JSA, UNESCO Fund in Trust, sponsored by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. The Bion, the central temple of Angkor Thom, is one of the most memorable monuments in Angkor Wat Heritage Site, Cambodia. Most people know Angkor Wat as the most significant temple in the site, but imagery of Bayan's main feature, the faced towers, are just as well known, if not more. The Bayan's complex, unique, and mysterious spatial construction attracts architects. And historians, just as much as the face towers. The Bayon was built by the respected King Jayabalman the Seventh, from the twelfth to the thirteenth century during the height of Khmer Empire. Jayabalman the Seventh took on the massive building campaign as he expanded his domain throughout the Indochinese Peninsula. While a major restoration effort is underway, the temple has been neglected for a long time, and it it is deteriorating. Attention and care is needed from all sorts of professionals. Looking into the smallest architectural element is one of the ways to make the temple last for another centuries. Here is one of them. Thank you for viewing this presentation, which will explain the intent and utility of a specialized tool, a data tool. This tool has been designed to help in cataloging and managing information essential to the restoration of the Bayon Temple, located in the center of Angkor Thom, Cambodia. Designed to assist the many professionals. Involved in the restoration effort, this tool or database can keep track of the over fifty thousand stones, the architectural elements of the Bayon. As they do the restoration, the workers take notes about the stones, which are then entered in to the database. The stones data tool is, in essence, A sophisticated index about the stones. Information is gathered from many different sources, from archaeological findings and other scientific data, to drawings, photographs, and research documents. And while the database is informed by these various sources, it also informs them. The database contains a wide array of significant facts about the stones. Because it is built in a customizable database environment, additional fields of facts can be added or subtracted in the future. Of course, the beauty of having good information in the database is that we can get good information out of the database. Here are two examples of the kinds of reports that we can generate, each responding to different interests. The one on the right, which has architectural and artistic significance, shows images of a set of bas relief stones in one particular area. On the left, with、uh, significance for maintenance, a log of the cleaning. Of a large set of stones. Okay, I think it's time to look now at the database itself. We start with the home screen, which we call the navigation center, from which we can start data entry or do searches. Let's start with some data entry. The most interesting way to do that is to go by way of the topographical map. Which, as you can see, can be shown with or without subgrids. We can also zoom into one of the quadrants. 
This way we can really narrow in on the area that we want to record about. Once we select that cell, we start taking details of a new stone. We fill out a variety of facts, all relevant to the restoration process. Let's take a closer look at one of the facts that we care about, the elements, the architectural elements that the stones are part of. You see there's a nice list here, uh, and it's important to note that this list of choices, the list itself can be modified. Elements can be added or subtracted from this list at any point in the future. In addition to textual facts, we can also store images that help describe each individual stone. There's a simple guided process through which you can add new images into the database from your desktop. These images are shown here as thumbnail small images, and they can also be seen full size. It's important to note that the images can be of any kind. We can have photographs or sketches. As well, we can have video or even sound. Uh, we're going to leave it to the scientists to figure out how to make the stones sing, but certainly the database is ready. So, having entered the data, we can now look at searching and reviewing the data. Again, we like to start with the topographical map, and we use the grids and the subgrids and zooming to help us identify exactly what area or areas we're concerned with. Once we've made that selection, you'll see that a list pops up of all of the stones that have been recorded in that area. What's not shown here is that if you want to click on any of the stones in that list, you'll go to the detail view of it that's identical to the entry screen we saw previously. We do see here that this list can be filtered by two key facts. Is the stone bas relief or is the stone oversized? You'll note that making those selections uh, changes the list just identifying ones that fit those qualifications. As well, we see that there are images and facts stored relevant to the area itself. Not just the stones, but to the area. This is really important as it helps workers and researchers see not just the stones, but their context. Now let's try an even easier way of doing a search. We're going to go directly into the data entry screen in find mode, which means that any of the facts listed here can be used as search criteria. In fact, we can use many different criteria at the same time. We put the criteria in, click find, and we're given all of the stones that fit that criteria. Easy. While use of this data tool has just begun, the presentation is now coming to a close. It is worth noting that the database is designed to hold information not just about the stones which are scattered, but also about the stones that are intact and in place. By recording their qualities and location now, we are preparing ourselves in the event that any part of the temple may collapse in the future. This is preventative restoration. And in terms of the ongoing life of the database itself, it would be very natural to build a web interface upon the data structure we have designed. This interface would not be used for data entry. It would be used for researchers and interested parties from around the world to search the, the database and view summary reports. Thank you for your attention. It has been our pleasure to prepare this presentation for you, as it has been our honor 
as the designers of this data tool to use modern technology to assist in the restoration of an ancient and inspiring world heritage site.